pagi. Hi, good evening. Welcome to this first inaugural session of the Market Research Course. Um, shall we start? Shall we start with an introduction to market research as a subject? Right? Okay. Um, are you familiar with market research? Have you heard of the term? Have you come across it before? Uh, I know we are talking about uh, market research. What is probably market research? Is it coming? Uh, will it come under finance or HR or or statistics or or marketing? Absolutely, marketing, market research. It comes into marketing, right? It is. Uh, part of the field of uh, brand management, right? Are you familiar with the concept of brand management? Can you tell us what brand management is all about? Okay, so um, you know what a brand is. Surf is a brand, for example. It's a brand of detergents. iPhone is a brand of foam. Um, <clears throat> um, Innova is a brand of car. Swift is a brand of car, right? Coca-Cola is a brand of soft drink. Fanta is a brand of soft drink. Dove is a brand of soap, and so on and so forth. Right? Um, we all know that these are brands, right? But what many of us are possibly not aware of is the fact that, uh, in a sense, uh, Tata is also a brand. Murukappa is also a brand. ICICI is also a brand. Now, you may tell me that ICIC is a company, how is that a brand? Tata is a group of companies, how is that a brand? How is that a brand? So it brings us back to the core of what a brand is. A brand is something that stands for a set of qualities. So Tata is a group of companies which stands for a set of qualities. Now to me it stands for trust and reliability and so forth. So somebody else stand for something else. But therefore, it's a brand. I say, I say to me stands for anything to do with finance. Right. And associated good qualities like very dynamic and very aggressive in the market and so forth. And therefore, I say, I say it's a brand. Right. Uh, you had a question? Yeah. So then going by the same logic, uh, would we then call famous personalities and celebrities as brands as well? Fantastic. So, um, um, Missy is a brand because Missy stands for a certain set of qualities. Primarily, he stands for excellence. Bernard Kohli is a brand. He stands for excellence. He stands for maybe physical fitness. Now, that is the reason these sports people are able to endorse other product brands. So, a brand can be a product brand can be a company brand, can be a person brand, uh, can be a country brand. We all talk about German engineering. We talk about Japanese cars as if it is one category. We talk about Chinese product and automatically when we talk about Chinese products, we think of something which is low cost and accessible. We talk about Japanese cars, we already talk about you know cars which are good on mileage and lightweight cars. We talk about German engineering, it is excellent. Uh, we talk about, uh, unfortunately, we talk about Indian sense of time, meaning we'll always be 10 minutes, 15 minutes late to a meeting or to a class with some people, right? So, all these are brands. The point is, if it stands for a set of qualities, it is a brand. Now, some of it is a commercial brand. You can sell the product because it has got certain values associated. So, Dove has got a certain set of qualities associated with that soap. And therefore, there are people prepared to pay money to buy that brand and so on and so forth. Now, a brand has to be managed, right? Uh, when we say brand has to be managed, on the one side, it has to sell in the market, people have to buy it. On the other side, it has to constantly improve, improve its image, as in more and more people should become aware of the brand, more and more people should form a good opinion about the brand, right? So, uh, so there is this whole brand management as, as a concept as a role. 
and uh, a person who manages a brand is something like a brand CEO, a chief executive officer. He's a big boss of the brand. In the sense, it sounds very good that he he can take the decisions about the brand. But remember, it also means he's responsible for the brand to do well. So there are various sub functions under that, which help this brand manager to do his job. Right. So what are the sub functions? So there is something called, uh, I mean, the code is brand thinking, right? Uh, there is a sales management team, okay? There is advertising which is done for the brand. Are these marks clear? Are you able to see them? Yeah. Then there's something called public relations or the reputation management, right? There is social media, which all of you are very familiar with. Everybody is into Facebook and Instagram these days. You may not be equally familiar with the term public relations or reputation management, or for that matter, sales management. There is packaging and there is market research. So market research is one of the functions which supports the brand to be managed well. Right? Would you like to look at what each of these functions do very briefly before we go forward? into the market research itself? Yes. Right. Okay. So I'll go down one slide now. Let's look at brand thinking first. Um, so um, I'll use a pen here. So basically the brand thinking is about you have to decide what the brand stands for, the brand position, the target group, the marketing mix, geography, the back size, etc. Now, each of these terms may require a brief explanation, right? What is brand position? Now, DAW stands for very good moisturizing qualities as a soap. They have promoted them, so they consciously try to say that is the main advantage of DAW. Uh, and I hope I'm correct, but I'm, even if I'm slightly wrong, take it as an example. Minimix stands for the goodness of Ayurvedic formulations, right? Chandrika also stands for the goodness of Ayurvedic formulation. Mysore sandal stands for the, you know, the, the beauty, the eternal beauty and eternal appeal of sandal, which in the Indian context is always a traditional lot of appeal types, right? I mean, we're talking about ancient, uh, you know, our mythology. We talk about people applying sandal paste on their skin to be fresh and to, you know, to smell good and so on and so forth. Um, Life Boy talks about antibacterial. You, you have a bath with life boy, in what are infections you've picked up because you're playing a game outside or fall and the dirty thing will go on. So each of them is taken a position. On the other hand, you take uh, Pepsi for example. Pepsi used to have an expression which says choice of a new generation. So they're not saying that they stand for taste or sweetness. They're saying I am the product that appeals to a certain kind of audience. Which is new generation, people with new generation thinking. People, not just younger people, people in new generation thinking. So that is a position that they have taken. They stand for certain kinds of people. Coca-Cola took a position that, you know, they are part of the Indian cultural milieu. So they advertised on Diwali, so on and so forth. So they took a conscious position that I am integrating with India and Indian culture. So brands can take different positions and it's a brand managing role to decide what is the position that I'm going to take? So the position should be something which appeals to people, a large number of people, and it should be very differentiated from all what the other brands are doing. You can't just say, they are standing for this, I will also stand for this. That's not good enough. There have to be something different. So that's brand position. Likewise, there is target group. You have to say, I am meant for men of a certain age group who uh, are working in an office or who play sports, or you know, who are IT professionals or so on and so forth, right? You have to decide what kind of people my product is meant for. That's not the same as position. It is what kind of people I want to buy my product. You have to define that in very common sense terms. You have to decide what kind of markets I'm going to be present in. Am I, talk, am I going to be present in the metropolitan cities of the country? Or am I going to be present in the smaller towns or the rural areas? So on and so forth, right? What kind of pack sizes? Am I going to be present in tetra packs? Or am I going to be in bottles? Right? And we're going to be large packs or small packs and so on and so forth. And how am I going to advertise? Am I going to advertise on television? Am I going to advertise on uh, newspaper? Am I going to advertise uh, only on digital medium? Right? So all these things the brand person has to think about. 
So that is sorry. What is marketing mix? Marketing mix is you think about what kind of packaging, what kind of advertising, what kind of pricing. All those are called marketing mix elements. Together they are the marketing mix. They are individual elements. So you know, all these things together become the marketing plan. That's why it's called the marketing mix. Right? So all this is the brand thinking rules. Only after these things are in place, only after this is conceptualized, can other things come and play a part of executing that conceptualization. Right? Let's go on to the next slide. So next one would be sales management. So it's not enough to think about the brand. It has to be sold. Now typically an FMCG, uh, do you all know what an FMCG is? Yes. Fast moving consumer Fast moving consumer good. Excellent. So FMCG products are available at a local shop. You can go to a supermarket or you can go to a nearby grocery shop. You, you, you can even go to a petty shop and you will find many of the FMCGs, right? So there is a channel which brings it to that shop. So if this is the company, from the company it goes to something known as a, a stockist. With a very large organization who has warehouses and they take care of the legal paperwork when it goes from state of Maharashtra to state of Tamil Nadu, etc. etc. So this is the stockist. So the stockist is goes to somebody called the distributor. Right? Or it goes to somebody called the wholesaler. And from the distributor, it comes to the shop, the retailer. In marketing terms, it's called the retailer. What we call shop is what is in technical terms, it's called the retailer. Or after the wholesaler also, it can come to the retailer. So the consumer, you know, goes and buys from the retailer. Right? We go and buy it from here. What is the difference between a distributor and a wholesaler? Uh, a distributor is an organized entity who is part of the official chain of the company. So the company provides a product to the distributor. A wholesaler is just one. If this is a retailer, a wholesaler is just a very large retailer. He buys it in bulk from the company. He can tell, sell either to retailers or to consumers. Okay. People can walk in there. Either a shop person can walk in there and buy or a consumer like this can go in and buy. But a distributor can sell only to a retailer. That's the structure of the organization. It's, it's an organized thing there. Right? So, so if from the company, uh, you know, if the consumer is buying it for 100 rupees, just for example, the retailer will buy from the distributor for maybe 75 rupees or 80 rupees. The distributor in turn will buy from the stockist for maybe 78 rupees. And the stockist will buy from the company for about 75 rupees. So the company is selling it for 75, but eventually by the time it comes to the consumer, it's 100 rupees. Or these are the margins. That's how they make their money, all these people in the business. Right? So the sales management job is making sure that all this goes smoothly. There is enough stock on the shelf, expired stock is removed from, from the shelf, the stock is visible on the shelf, so on and so forth. Right? Okay. Can we go to the next point? Advertising. We all know what advertising is. We see it on TV, we see it on social media. It's pretty clear, right? What is the message that I want to communicate? How do I want to communicate the message? Where should the advertising come? So what do I want to say? I'm sorry about that. I'm going to go back on slide. So what is do I want to say about the brand? How do I say it? Do I say it as a TV ad or as a press ad or what kind of... Do I show children in the ad or do I show music in the ad or, or do I show pets or something like that? And what kind of media should I be presented? Should I be presented in television or newspaper or outdoors or... All these are the decisions which need to be done here and then executing them. Right? Yeah, we'll go forward. What is PR? PR stands for Public Relations. I'm so sorry I keep doing this. Um, you will periodically see an article which says uh, Reliance Geo uh, or Tata set to acquire, Tata consumer set to acquire so and so brand. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I saw an article about three or four weeks ago which said Tata Consumer is going to acquire Bavanto, which is the popular soft drink in uh, Tamil Nadu. Right? Now, that news, how does it come to the newspaper? There is a public relations mechanism 
right? There are people who take that information from the company and release it to the press. So news about the company, which are uh, which is true, mind you, it is not that it's false news, but it is meant to give a good impression about the company, how the company is active, how the company is growing, how the company is doing good things, right? That is a process. This is not advertising. It is news. But it is news released by the organization. So it improves the reputation of the company. That's why it's called reputation management as well. So there is a, a large organization have maintained a team to make sure that whatever is written about them is in a positive light. They keep tracking it. Any kind of negative mentions about them anywhere, they'll go and find out why it is happening and they'll try to solve it. Again, in a truthful way. Good companies do it in a truthful way, not in a false way, right? So social media is part of that. Having a good Facebook page, having good Instagram, making sure that when people write in blogs and so on and so forth, they write good things about the company, they don't write bad things. And any person puts a complaint about the company on a social media handle, this company will go and investigate saying, what is this complaint? Can we solve the problem? Right? It's all part of reputation management. Okay? Let's go forward. Packaging. We all interact with packaging without thinking about it. We take it for granted. We complain if you open a pack of biscuits and the biscuit is already broken. We complain if you're going in a train and we're not able to open a packet of chips. Now take me for example, I always carry a ballpoint pen because that is very useful to open a packet of chips. Because I cannot, I'm not able to open it otherwise. Right? We complain about packaging but we don't think about what goes into it. So you have to decide whether you want a you know, a transparent pack or a non-transparent pack. You have to decide whether you want a bottle or a sachet um, or a tetra pack, so on and so forth, right? You have to find out which is ideal for that product. You know, it should remain on the shelf for a long time without getting damaged. It should have a good visibility. The lettering should be what size there, etc., etc. One of the international, uh, you know, studies is about how most packaging in the world is not meant for people who are above 40 years of age. The people over 40 years of age cannot read very well. You know, they need those spectacles because they get long sight. So very often trying to open a pack, they will, oh, what is the pack, what's expiry date? They you would have seen people doing this. Nobody designs packaging keeping those people in mind. But they are the people who have the money to spend because they are the people who have reached a certain stage in their career. Right? So these are the small things which are difference between merely good and excellent. And this is also part of the brand management role. Right? We go forward. And finally, we come to our subject, which is market research, right? So the brand manager has various questions in his mind, right? Um, market research job is to find answers to those questions. Now, market research itself has a wide field. It is a subfield within the field of brand management. It is actually supporting field to the field of brand management. But by itself, it is a very wide field. It has qualitative research, it has quantitative research, it has employee research, right? Now you can ask me, how come employee research is a part of marketing? To the employee, the company is a brand. But the employee forms perceptions about the company. Therefore, it is also a brand management role in a sense, except that it is directed internally and not outside. Right. So, uh, so as I have just said that it, it involves finding answers to the various questions that the brand manager may have. And you could be wondering what kind of questions could these be? Right. We'll see that. Yeah. So, um, here are some examples. These are just examples. The questions could be much, much, much more than this. Here are just some examples. So, uh, how satisfied are my consumers? Are my consumers satisfied with the kind of product and service that I'm giving them? Which newspaper should I advertise it so that more people see the advertising? I don't want to spend money, right? I want to have good results for it. We have created a new TV commercial. A TV commercial is a name for a TV ad, technical term. Should we go ahead and release that ad? Should we air it? Will it do a good job for us? Will it make the brand situation improve? I find that my market share is dropping. Why is my market share dropping? I've run a campaign, ad campaign, a campaign, an ad campaign is a term that we use. You run advertising for five months, three months, something, right? How well is the campaign performed in terms of results for the brand? Has it improved the way the brand is perceived in the market? Who are my most important customers in terms of how much money they spend, in terms of how often they come and interact with me, right? 
And how successful will my new product be if I launch it? I have a new product idea. Should I go ahead and launch it in the market? Will it make money for me? All these are possible questions. And there are many, 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 many more questions like this. Which is doing a small example. Yes, sorry, you have a question. So, uh, I'm just uh, trying to understand. Uh, every time I use an Uber auto or an Ola uh, cab or auto, uh, right after the ride gets over, they ask me to rate the driver. Right. Uh, similarly, with respect to if I buy something on Amazon. Right. After the purchase, they ask me to rate the experience. Right. And after the product gets delivered, they ask how right. well was the product, how well was it delivered, right. and so on and so forth. Right. So, would all these also be considered as market research? Absolutely. It's an excellent example of, you know, what we call customer satisfaction research. How satisfied is my, I have given a facility of an Uber ride. How satisfied is the, is the passenger with the ride? That's what they've asked you. Or I have sold a product through Amazon has sold a product. How satisfied is a buyer with, you know, the process of delivery? Or other examples that mentioned are all excellent examples of what we call customer satisfaction research. And it's a big part of market research because if I have satisfied customers, they'll come back and buy more from me. What is more, they will recommend me to other people. Whereas if I mess up and my customer is unhappy, I probably lost him forever because there's so much competition in the market. I can't afford to uh, mess up. Right? So, typically these are the kind of questions that market research, you know, tries to find answers to. Right? 